So this suspension setup, it's a motion control suspension, single adjustable, so it's, uh, it's rebound only. Uh, now you can um, adjust it for um, compression, but the MCS system is uh, from factory, the compression is pretty good. And I kind of wanted to go with a budget alternative, and I didn't want to get too lost in the adjustability to begin with. So along with that, these are 275 foot-pound springs in the rear. So that'll help uh, in the rear squat, like under load with the, the spoiler you can see in this video right here. So the front, the front, now they are 800 foot-pound springs. Now that is probably going to be a bit too stiff. It is what Vorschlag recommended to me. Um, I am going to be supercharging the car, so it's an additional 40 or so pounds in the front. Um, well, probably more with an intercooler. So, but, you know, uh, they're only about 80 bucks to swap out, so we're going to try the heaviest first, and then go down. So what might happen is, in the later videos you'll see, we might have a little bit of understeer, uh, a little bit of the skating in the front end. So, along with the, uh, the front suspension here is a uh, Vorschlag camera plates. Now these have a ton of adjustability, so hopefully I can get um, more camber and more adjustability in the front. So next up is a shortened white line end link. Now with the MCS system, you need a shortened end link. This is not actually for a Mustang. I think it's for I mean, like an SCI or something, but it works. So what we're going to be doing today, actually, is an anti-dive kit. Now this replaces the front, rear, lower control arm bushing. Now what this does is uh, the stock bushings, you know, they have, have 52,000 miles on them, and I'm running like 300% more traction than stock. So hoping this will help some of the deflection with camber and caster and all that kind of stuff. And uh, well, unfortunately I'm gonna have to have these pushed off, so we'll have to get the lower control arm off, take it to Napa, have them press it off, press off the old one, press on the new one, and then we'll move on to the coilovers themselves. All right, so here next to the car, you can see, uh, just to go over some of the things that I already have done, uh, it's got the, uh, the GT500 Brembo brakes from the seven to nine Mustangs. So these are the four pop Brembos. Anything more than that is overkill, unless you're doing like Daytona or some of the high speed tracks and you're willing to do 10 tenths on the track. Uh, this is the old Eibach Proline suspension is pretty good, but the, the Hoosiers and the Giant tires over exceeding it. H&R Springs, it's got the Ford Racing um, sway bar here. Uh, we have the SR adjustable end link here. And that's about it for the, uh, we got the steel braided uh, brake line, obviously. Um, we have the Steeda uh, X4 uh, ball joint and the bump steer kit as well. Um, so that's about it for the front end. So we're going to be swapping out a lot of parts, obviously. So let's get started. All right, so we're back. I got the lower control arms off the car. We got the new bushings that are going to be pressed on right here. You can see, uh, you can see really the difference between. Here's the white line. It's called the anti-dive kit. It's just a new rear front lower control arm bushing versus the old one. This one, uh, much more beefy when it comes to where it bolts in here. Not to mention, uh, it's a lot lighter. So these were like oil-filled garbage. They're probably deflecting a shitload with the, uh, the slicks I was running. So we're gonna we're gonna press these on the the car, get everything bolted up. Now we did put on the MCS suspension. Uh, haven't hooked up like the, the knuckles or anything, so I'm gonna have to hook that back up. Get the car down, set the ride height, and that's gonna take a while. That we got the MCS bolted in. Now one thing I have noticed, which is uh, very happy to report, the spring diameter size is much much smaller. You can see over here, look how much bigger the springs are in the Eibach uh, Pro Damper set up here. What that's going to enable is you can see in the strut tower here, and you can see the, uh, the, the new um, 
Vorschlag camera plates, camera caster plates. So because of the smaller diameter here, I'm going to have a lot more room to adjust the camber. And actually I have so much adjustability on the car here that if I want to run even more camber, I can take a cutting wheel and cut right here and I can actually run 18 by 12s and run a 335 size tire in a square setup. So that is pretty spiffy. Now I'm not going to do that for now. Uh, we'll probably just run an aggressive amount of camber. Probably about negative 3.5, 3.7-ish. See how that goes. So we're going to bolt everything back up and set the ride height. All right, so we got everything bolted up. Uh, we got the new white line and lower control arm bushings in there. Those should, uh, should cause a lot less deflection. So the camber curve and all that fancy geometry stuff should be a lot better. Uh, MCS is all bolted up and set up the sway bar end links. So the sway bar is nice and straight when the, down, the car is down on the ground. Um, Downside is the MCS didn't really have a good place for the brake lines, so until I figure something out, I'm just gonna zip tie them like this. It'll be fine. So I have a little bit more caster. Uh, the lower control arm bushings were the biggest pain in the ass I've ever done on the car here, so I would really just recommend taking it to somebody. So we set the ride height. It uh, should be about what it was before. Now, uh, I'm not going to get a, a uh, corner balance right away, mainly because putting on a supercharger and a heat exchanger, so it's going to be over 100 pounds added to the front of the car. So the next two events I'm going to be running at, the car won't be corner balanced, so it won't be perfect, but, you know, it's better than uh, running someone else's car or something. I'll be running my own car. All right, so the suspension is on. Everything seems to be working good. I just took it for a ride and oh my God, is it smooth. So, you know, originally coming from, went from the stock to the Eibach uh, Pro Dampener system, which was a good setup, but with the 315 size tires I had, it just was overloaded and uh, is terrible tire wear. So I decided to gut the whole suspension, kind of redo everything. So as you saw, we put on the new bushings, we put on the MCS single adjustables. They're kind of more budget friendly for a top tier suspension like MCS. So, you know, driving down the road, bumps and stuff that would just jar you before, just soaks them up beautifully. I started off in the middle of the road with rebound after talking to some folks. So thank you very much, especially you, Christian. So, um, so what's next? Well, uh, actually, What's next is putting a clutch and flywheel on this car so we can supercharge it. So that should be a ton of fun. Uh, you know, adding the nice suspension added some drivability back to it, but the clutch and flywheel is gonna remove some drivability because it's gonna be a higher engagement speed, lighter flywheel, uh, you know, stiffer clutch, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we are, so once the clutch and flywheel, and I'm also dropping in on a very expensive MGW shifter after uh, you saw some of the videos there, Mike couldn't get it into third gear. Um, and I'll, you know, every once in a while I won't be able to get into third gear. The Hurst shifter is good, um, but it's a good street shifter. If you uh, are loading the suspension left or right, it really doesn't like that. It's, it's perfectly content going straight, but uh, not while turning. So hopefully the MGW shifter will fix that. So uh, we are going to do two events before we supercharge the car. Uh, there's going to be an event in Brooksville, in Tampa. It's an airport event. And then the final season ender at uh, Milia. So uh, we'll see if we do videos for those or, you know, hopefully the car, nothing happens. I still got to get an alignment on it. I had a lot of trouble with uh, the caster on the, uh, the bushings that I put on. So I got to get that kind of fixed. Probably not the safest right now with the way it is. So one of the other things that we're going to have to do is corner balance the car. Now, if you don't know what that is, is because the suspension is adjustable, you can uh, you can kind of prop the car ever so slightly in either direction to try and balance the weight. 
Now, I've noticed when I have about a 120-pound passenger, someone like my wife or someone like a child or something, my car is a lot better balanced with the old suspension. So it's kind of hoping one of the things I was hoping to phase out with this new suspension is uh, not having to run with a passenger uh, to have a better balanced car. Probably a lot of that deals with having to remove the, I took out the AC and I moved the battery to the back. So it kind of, you know, it, it did help with weight distribution, but not so much with weight balance. So the other thing we're going to do when, uh, uh, the other reason I'm holding off corner balancing the car is the supercharger. Uh, the supercharger weighs, I think, about 60 pounds. And on top of that, I'm adding a very large heat exchanger. It's probably a bit overkill for what I need, but uh, I don't want the car overheating. And I really, really want to run the supercharger very conservatively because I do not want to have to build the motor. And I will build the motor if the motor blows up, but, you know, the car should make almost 460 wheel torque, which is plenty for, for autocross, which is mainly what this car is going to do. Now we're going to do, you know, we host our own track days and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to do any sort of endurance and it's mostly just going to be for fun. So 460 wheel torque should be good enough. You know, I'm sure I'll contradict myself later on. So that's it for the, uh, the coilover install and uh, be sure to follow up with us on one of the next videos where I talk about first impressions out at the track. Now there's going to be a lot of uh, you know, dialing in. I may have to switch out spring rates. I'm running an 800 foot pound uh, spring rate up front and a 275 out back. Up front is probably too high. Uh, you know, From talking to a couple of different people, they recommended bunch of different things. So I figured I'd start high since I'm adding over 100 pounds uh, with the heat exchanger and the supercharger. So meaning the next two events, I'm not going to have those yet. So uh, it's more or less just going to be trying to tune maybe, you know, some things here and there and, you know, seeing if anything breaks or anything. I didn't tighten down something, but uh, so far, so good. But that's it. So be sure to follow up with us in the next video. And, uh, be sure to follow us up when we do the, uh, the supercharger install. Thanks for watching.